is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Now at 7, it's a story that has the entire world talking. I'm Amanda Stern, Tino. The former couple accused of abandoning their adopted daughter was in a central Indiana courtroom today trying to get their case dismissed. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum was there. She explains it will still be another week until we hear a decision on this controversial case. Christine Barnett, her attorney, and Michael Barnett's attorney all met with a judge in this Tippecanoe County courthouse today as this case continues to unfold. Christine Barnett was silent as she walked into the hearing today. She and her then husband, Michael Barnett, are both facing neglect of a dependent charges. They're accused of adopting a girl in 2010 and then abandoning her in 2013 after having her age legally changed from eight to 22 years old. Their attorneys say there's more to this story though. They claim the girl was actually an adult posing as a child and say they were the victims of fraud. Michael Barnett's attorney has filed a motion to dismiss the charges as well as have Michael's address removed from all public records, citing his safety. No decisions on either motion were made today. The judge scheduled another hearing for next week. We caught up with Michael Barnett's attorney after the hearing. He told us while disappointed more progress was not made today, he's still very optimistic. Um, we were prepared to argue those today. However, um, they were not set for a hearing just for status. So we set those for the date for the 23rd of next week. Um, somewhat disappointed that I wasn't, Michael wasn't granted to exclude his home address from the public purview. I'm very confident about our motion. Uh, I'm even more confident about Michael's innocence. Michael Barnett will appear in court next week as the hearings continue. As for Christine Barnett, the judge said she can return to her home, which is now in Florida. Her attorney declined to comment. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Megan, thank you. Another high-profile case unfolding in a Fulton County courtroom. A jury has been chosen in the trial of a woman accused of killing three children at a Rochester bus stop. A fourth child was seriously hurt. Alyssa Shepard is pleading not guilty to three counts of reckless homicide and other charges. The 24-year-old is accused of hitting the children with a pickup truck as they crossed a two-lane state highway to get on their school bus. If convicted, she faces 21 years in prison, six women and six men have been chosen for the jury plus two alternates. We know 15 seats in the courtroom have been reserved for the victim's families. Since the tragedy, the state has passed new laws improving school bus and bus stop safety. RTV6 is working to get answers for concerned residents of Nashville and Brown County. A big chunk of the city's downtown properties are going up for sale in two weeks. A man named Annie Rogers owned about a third of downtown Nashville's businesses, about 25 local shops. And when he passed away, his children decided to sell his estate. Residents, business owners, and elected officials are worried a buyer could come in and develop the properties. To try and help protect the businesses, the town council recently created new rules to make it harder to tear down buildings that are more than 50 years old. We talked to one shop owner who is staying optimistic. The spirit of Nashville is going to win out. And if someone buys it, they will buy it with the outlook of preserving it and, and helping Nashville stay the way it is. The properties are going up for auction on October 30th. We will let you know what happens and keep you updated on any future plans for downtown Nashville. A Greenwood woman will spend about six months in jail as part of her sentence for home improvement fraud. This is a story Call 6 has been following since last year in September. Natalie Davis pled guilty to felony charges for corrupt business influence and home improvement fraud. Davis was one of the operators of a business called Awesome Asphalt. The business is accused of taking money from customers for projects but never finishing the job. Davis was sentenced today to 180 days in jail and two years of probation. Well, Kevin Gregory joins us now. It's a little more cloudy out. We're seeing some changes happening. After all that sunshine we had this morning, Kevin. Clouds, but no rain yet, Amanda. If you're wanting some showers and an isolated thunder shower, it's still not out of the question, but I don't think it'll be all that widespread. There's the broad view in central Indiana, the cold front off to the west. We'll look into southwest portions of the state, southeast Illinois. You may see uh, this area develop and move to the north and east, and that's pretty much in line with what some of the computer models are showing with a little better chance of some heavier rain east and southeast of Indianapolis. And by no means do I mean heavy rain, just heavier than less than a tenth of an inch probably elsewhere. Temperatures at 67 in Indy. Here's our rising rain chance ahead of the cold front. 
Once the cold front goes through, temperatures will be falling and our rain chance will as well overnight. Nine o'clock, see this broken line here? A few downpours, maybe a rumble of thunder, not expecting severe storms. By 11, it's off to the east, just near Richmond, Greensburg to Seymour and then pushing out of the state as we go through the overnight. We'll focus on those temperatures and the weekend coming up. And even though Kevin's not quite predicting weather, winter weather yet, Indianapolis is wasting no time preparing for winter weather conditions. Today, the Indiana Department of Transportation inspected its entire fleet of snow plows. This was the first full fleet inspection held in Indianapolis. All 60 trucks were looked over to make sure they are ready for winter plowing and salting. And if you don't mind driving in the snow, NDOT might have a job for you. The department hosting a statewide job fair tomorrow to fill winter seasonal positions, which includes snow plow drivers. Winter work runs from November 4th through March 27th. Starting pay is $16 an hour. You must have proof of a commercial driver's license. There is one hiring location in the Indianapolis area, 7105 South Brookville Road. It will run from 10 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. And the Indianapolis Department of Public Works is also getting ready for winter. Today and tomorrow, DPW salt truck drivers will be checking their routes. You can see the real-time updates at the Indy Snow Force website. And DPW added seven new snow trucks to its fleet this year, in addition to 15 new trucks last year. The department has a total of 110 trucks and 14,600 tons of salt on hand. The Mass Ave staple is missing for the first time in more than a decade, but Ann Dancing will be back in a few weeks. Today, crews removed the light display from the plaza at the intersection of Mass Ave, Alabama, and Vermont Streets. Over the next few weeks, work will be done on the plaza along the Indianapolis Cultural Trail, and a new Ann Dancing will be installed. She'll still do the same move. She'll still be that same amber-orange color. Uh, she will be updated, so the main thing is that she's 14 years old, and the, the technology is a little out of date. So with the new and dancing, uh, rip, uh, maintenance is first. So we've designed her new structure so that we can go in and maintain her on the hotter days or the colder days as she does live outside 24-7, 365. The Indianapolis Cultural Trail raised more than $205,000 in private donations over four weeks in June to fund the new structure and the plaza upgrades. Congress is back from recess this week and the depositions continue as part of the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. And one of the central figures that sparked the investigation, Hunter Biden, is talking to ABC News. Andy Field has the latest. President Trump's overtures to Ukraine's president to investigate former Vice President Joe Biden and his son in a July 25th phone call launched the impeachment inquiry in Congress. During an exclusive interview with ABC News, Hunter Biden said he was shocked when the transcript of the call referenced him and his father. As for his business dealings in Ukraine that have been repeatedly attacked by the president and Republicans, he says he did nothing improper. Did I make a mistake based upon some un... A ethical lapse? Absolutely not. Trump has also targeted the younger Biden's Chinese business ventures, accusing him of pocketing $1.5 billion there. Here's the answer. No one ever paid me $1.5 billion. But Biden says if his father is elected president, he would commit to halting all work with foreign entities. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent is being deposed as part of the impeachment probe. In emails obtained by ABC News, Kent, a career diplomat, called efforts to smear the former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, and conservative media, fake news. According to the New York Times, yesterday's witness, former National Security aide Fiona Hill, described former National Security Advisor John Bolton as being so alarmed by Rudy Giuliani's back channel activities in Ukraine that he described the president's personal lawyer as a hand grenade who was going to blow everybody up. Infamous July 25th telephone call, it was not some kind of one off. Republican lawmakers continue criticizing how Democrats are handling the impeachment investigation process, but not the substance of those allegations against the president. Was it appropriate for the president to urge a foreign power to investigate his campaign rival? I think that's I think that's the question. You know, uh, people would have other people may have done this differently. Representative McCall and other Republicans say they want the hearings held in public so Americans can judge for themselves. Andy Field, ABC News, Washington. Still ahead on the news at 7, you might have seen the behind-the-scenes video of a signature dish from Panera Bread. Now you'll hear why the woman who posted the video agrees with the decision to fire her. But first, the stage will be crowded for tonight's Democratic debate, and there's been a major shakeup in the polls. We'll be right back. RTV6 is working for you. 
Welcome back to the news at 7. Tonight we are hearing from the family of the woman who was shot and killed by a Fort Worth, Texas police officer as she played video games with her nephew. Now the officer accused of shooting Atania Jefferson is under arrest and charged with murder. ABC's Romina Puga reports Jefferson's family wants answers in an independent investigation. No justice! Another Texas community in mourning and calling for justice. The terrifying moment caught on police body camera. Put your hands up, show Former hands. Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean was arrested and charged with the murder of 28-year-old Atatiana Jefferson. Dean's arrest warrant revealed that the victim pulled out a handgun and pointed it at the window when she heard a noise in her backyard. It also states that Dean never identified himself as an officer before pulling the trigger. Former officer Dean is certainly responsible and should be held accountable, but so should the system that, that made a way for him. Now Jefferson's family, along with the Fort Worth mayor, are calling for an independent investigation into the police department. When training is adequate, you have to fix the training. The police chief got emotional about the loss of trust in the department. And I likened it to a bunch of ants building a, an ant hill, and then somebody comes with a hose and washes it away, and they just have to start from scratch and build over. I think that's going to be all. Thank you. This as Atatiana's family mourns the loss of their sister. We understand that, you know, life does have to progress, but right now it's just, it's hard to even take a step forward. The killing of Atatiana Jefferson comes weeks after the Amber Geiger case in Dallas. That former police officer was sentenced to 10 years in prison for killing an unarmed black man in his own home. Aaron Dean was released on bond late Monday night and Jefferson's attorney is asking who ordered the officer to respond to a wellness call in a SWAT style vehicle. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. A dozen Democrats will be on stage in just a few minutes for their first debate of the primary season and you can count on the ongoing impeachment inquiry being a major topic for candidates and this is the first debate where former Vice President Joe Biden is not alone at the top of the polls. The latest numbers from Quinnipiac shows that Sir Quinnipiac showing a surging Senator Elizabeth Warren with 30% support to Biden's 27. One area where candidates responses could be in question is whether anyone will go after Vice President Biden for his son Hunter's business deal with Ukraine. The debate begins at 8. It's airing on CNN and on NPR stations. Still ahead on the news at 7, the trick to a healthier lifestyle might be your social network, and we're not just talking about Facebook. We are talking about cooler temperatures. 67 still feels good now. Look to the northwest. That's where our cooler air will come from. How long will it stick around? Find out coming up. Works. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Welcome back. The woman who claims she was fired by Panera after posting this social media video says her termination was justified. The video shows how Panera employees prepare the chain's macaroni and cheese. She posted the video on TikTok with the caption exposing Panera. It shows her taking a frozen bag of mac and cheese, placing it in boiling water, and then dumping the contents into a bowl. Some commenters were surprised to learn the food was frozen. But others are pointing out that's the way many dishes are made by fast food and chain restaurants. Panera has said they do freeze some items to ensure quality. Now the worker posted a follow up saying she lost her job over the video. And on Twitter she says her termination was justified because she violated food safety regulations by having long nails and having her phone out. Well, some positive news about high school sports and your child's safety. A new study says fewer teens are getting co concussions during practice compared to the number of concussions experienced during games and competitions. Researchers say they found that trend in 20 different sports, but not cheerleading. They believe it's because cheerleaders practice differently than they compete. The sports with the highest overall concussion rates are boys football, girls soccer, and boys ice hockey. Safety officials are worried two cranes could collapse at the New Orleans construction site where two people died and one person is still missing. Fire crews have expanded the evacuation areas surrounding the Hard Rock Hotel, which partially collapsed Saturday. They say both cranes at the construction site are unstable and could fall. Crews are still searching the collapsed part of the building for the person who was missing. 30 people were also injured in the accident. It turns out the secret to breaking a bad habit or building healthy new habits might depend on who you spend your time with. ABC's Megan Trevisian explains in tonight's Medical Minute. 
Researchers found that being part of a social network helps us reinforce positive health behaviors and discourages things that may be unhealthy. The study included over 53,000 people and showed that efforts to get people talking about things like sexual health, alcohol use, diet, and smoking help them significantly change their own behaviors. This seems to be the case, especially for topics related to sexual health. The study showed a 46% reduction in risky sexual practices when people were educated in their social groups. Your friends help you reinforce your habits too, which may explain why researchers saw results persisting beyond six months. While you should keep talking directly to your doctor about ways to be healthier, but keep an open mind if they recommend you take part in a group meeting, join an online health community, or host a social gathering. Because why not have some fun with your friends if it helps you stay healthy? With this Medical Minute, I'm Megan Tavrizian, ABC News. All right, now looking at weather, we're seeing some changes in the forecast, Kevin. It's not going to be as warm tomorrow, but... Uh, much colder, but I was just kind of dialing in the radar. There's some showers out there. Ooh. It's exciting, yeah, to finally find we some rain. We could use a little rain. We've got the clouds. Now I'll show you the showers in a second. It's all part of this, a transition from the comfortable temperature of 72 today to the fall-like feel of 52 tomorrow. Uh, as far as the rain is concerned, it should be light if we see a quarter of an inch or more, likely south and east, say on a line from Richmond to Columbus and Bedford southeast. Otherwise, rain will be lighter than that. Temperature trend, once we hit 52 tomorrow, that's kind of rock bottom for the high temperature trend. As cool air then will give way to gradual warming trend Thursday, Friday, and that trend gains momentum as we move into the weekend and we'll get temperatures back into the 70s. At first glance, you look at this and you say, well, there's no rain out there. Okay, we've got to work at it, but we'll find some. Just to the south of Martinsville, west of Morgantown, another little speck just northeast of Martinsville. I think this is the beginning of what will become a little more widespread. We slide to the southwest and just southwest of Bloomfield in Greene County, some other green patches. The enhancement, I think, will come from a cold front that's back in Illinois. And you see a little lightning there just to the southwest of Evansville, not expecting severe weather. But I do think we'll see an uptick in the showers and isolated thunderstorms ahead of that temperature change. That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Temperatures 45 in Minneapolis, 62 in Chicago, while it's in the 70s in Kentucky and in Nashville, Tennessee. 9 o'clock tonight, isolated thunderstorms, showers around, the leading edge of which by then will be to Muncie. Greenfield down through Franklin, Nashville, Bloomington, and Bedford. That pushes to the east, and by the time we get to midnight, the uh pieces of heavier shower activity will be sliding off into the Buckeye State. The wind direction will flip, come around to the northwest, and ensure that cool flow of air tomorrow. We'll also see wind gusts to 30 miles per hour. That's why you'll need the heavier jacket. After midnight, still a few showers, especially south and east. Trend for the temperatures you can see down into the mid-40s first thing in the morning. And we don't warm up from there. Afternoon high temperature only at about 52 degrees. With that breeze, it will feel cooler. Plus, I think we'll have quite a bit of cloud cover through the day. Some of you north, Cass County, say Logansport to Peru to Marion, you'll struggle to hit 50 degrees. South 55 in Bedford and the metro area, our coolest day in the seven-day forecast at 52. Check out the rest of the seven-day forecast. We do return to the 70s, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. With that, the increasing chance for thunderstorms. Looks like Sunday night, Monday, thunderstorm activity. Some of those could be on the strong side. We'll once again transition from the low to mid 70s Monday into the lower 60s on Tuesday. We're just all over the place. You got it. <laughs> all right, thanks, Kev. Still ahead, a dog decided he's had enough when his owner challenges him with a hike. And you don't want to miss the outcome, especially if you're an animal lover. That's next right here on RTV6. Call 1-800-CALL-KEN. Finally tonight, a situation you might be able to relate to if you've ever fallen short when it comes to a physical challenge. A man from Utah is rethinking his choice in hiking partners after he hit the trail with his best friend Floyd. Floyd <laughs> is a 190 pound mastiff. The pair got about two miles into their hike when Floyd decided he had enough. He sat down and refused to move. Floyd was so determined to stay put that fellow hikers had to call the sheriff's office for a rescue. It took them about four hours, but they eventually got Floyd off the trail 
and now he's resting. He looks so comfortable. I, I think the plan was probably to ride Floyd out. You know, if he didn't give up, that's, that's pretty I think, amazing. Uh, Big boy. Floyd was smart thinking. Let's see what Simon says here. We talk about taking your dog for a walk. If you send in a picture, there's Simon. He's on the couch. He already knew he's so that he's not in for a uh, several mile uh -huh. hike. We're, I'm at a safe distance there. You know, we're just meeting. And yeah. so his ears are up. He's listening. Temperatures in the 60s, an expanding area of showers between now and our conversation at 11 o'clock tonight. Non severe rumbles of thunder. Not expecting any severe storms. Definitely expecting cool temperatures. Temperatures tomorrow. So, no hikes in the meantime? Nope. Well, I just relax. <laughs> I won't ask you to go hiking. All right, we'll see you at 11.